my top five concert moments. So what I tried to do here is just single moments in time, you know, no more than a minute, just, just an experience that I can remember uh, that stands out as sort of, you know, just an unforgettable uh, moment. Uh, first time doing a video in a long, long time, a couple months, a lot of stuff, had the COVID, finally got it. I think I had it right when it started when I came back from New York, but I definitely had it on a recent trip that I went to New York. <clears throat> um, I got to New York and uh, immediately felt sick, or within 24 hours felt sick. Uh, <clears throat> got tested uh, and I was positive for, I don't know, seven to 10 days. Uh, and it, mine was pretty bad. Um, don't wanna get that again. Uh, so to all you who have had it, and it sounds like most of us have, um, I feel your pain now. It was, uh, I was not feeling well, but I'm doing a lot better now. Uh, and then I've been traveling a bit, went to Coachella this past weekend, which was really, really good. Uh, it's an incredibly well-run festival, um, just so much fun. Uh, and that's about it. Um, now let's get into these five moments. I'm not going to show any associated records or, uh, just going to talk about these moments and let's, I didn't put them in order, but let me try to put them in order right now. All right. I did it. Well, let me, five, four, sorry, I should have, should have prepped this. Two, one, okay. Number five, um, Sunvolt. Uh, talk a lot about Sunvolt, one of my favorite bands. This was in 19, I believe 1997. It was at Irving Plaza in New York City. And the moment was Jay Farrar welcomed up to the stage, Roger McGuinn from the Birds. And they played 5D and I have a, every one of these, I'm going to get a chill when I talk about it because I just remember I was, uh, some of were, they've always, they're one of my favorite bands ever, but during that period, I was really, really into them. I was just digging into alt country and the, the sort of leaders of it, some and Wilco, I was, um, seeing often, uh, you know, 10 to 15 times a year. And if I had the story right. I think Roger McGuinn performed with Wilco on a VH1 special. Yeah, they did. It was the same day. So Uncle Tupelo has never reunited, but I believe it was the same day, maybe one day apart. McGuinn was in New York, performed with Wilco. I think they did So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star. You can find it on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then at night, Roger McGuinn, in the evening, Roger McGuinn went and sat in with Sunvolt. And I think he made some comment about like, you know, bands break up, but you know, you never know what's gonna happen. Well, it's now been almost 30 years since Uncle Tupelo broke up and they have not, uh, they have not performed together. Who knows if they ever will? I think they will, but that Roger McGuinn 5D, seeing Jay Farrar. And I remember Roger McGuinn was having, sort of had to convince Jay to sing because he was shy, I think about it. Uh, to sing one of the harmony parts or something. It was just such a cool moment. Um, number four, 2016. This is Bruce Springsteen in Norway. I've talked about that show quite a bit. I went to Norway on vacation and saw Springsteen twice in Trondheim and in Oslo. Uh, I went with a friend uh, who is actually Norwegian, so he was able to show me around uh, the country quite a bit, but the moment that I'm thinking of is when we saw him in Trondheim, uh, he, it was raining. Uh, I think, I think I've shared a little bit about this show. I remember we drove into the town and all, all the bars had their doors open and they were all blasting Springsteen. It was incredible. And I remember we, we hung out with some folks and I think they said that the largest show ever in that city was 15,000 people, and it was Elton John. I think Springsteen was 35,000. So 
if I have that story right, or if this person told who, who told me, uh, gave me the right figures, that was a 2x, uh, over a 2x increase in terms of the most, uh, most highly attended shows ever in the city of Trondheim, Norway. And the moment Bruce opened, because of the rain, with Who Will Stop the Rain, which I, that was unbelievable. And then Badlands. And the moment Badlands kicked in, it's just something about being overseas. Uh, you know, I grew up with Springsteen, thinking about uh, my brother, who I was uh, estranged from at the time. And my father, my, my family... It, it was just being over there was, I don't know, Badlands kicked in. I think it's the only time that I was legitimately crying at a show. And I remember I was not bawling, but I think my friend thought it was the rain in my eyes, but it wasn't. Uh, Badlands, I'll never forget that. And thank God Springsteen uh, released that show in his archives. I now have it on CD and digital. I listen to it quite a bit to relive that experience. Number three is 2011, and this was supposed to be LCD Sound System's final show, uh, their final show uh, in New York at Terminal 5. They ended up adding, I believe, one or two more Terminal 5 shows. Then they added a couple MSG shows. I think it was a couple. And then they just came back together, which I'm very glad that they did. Um, but this was at at least for a time, this was supposed to be their final show. So I flew in uh, from the West Coast to New York. And they opened with Dance Yourself Clean. And anybody who knows that song, there's sort of the build up, like this is a two minute, two minutes, and then it just explodes. And I remember I was with a good friend of mine. We were sort of by the side, sort of back. And they did the intro, and I remember James Murphy, right before the whole song kind of blows up, he went like this. <laughs> and I, this, you can find this on YouTube as well. I'll try and find this video. I'll try and find these videos and post them uh, in the description. I felt like a kid again. It, just the way the room exploded, it was such an incredible moment. I mean, it could, this could easily be my number one. Um, but I'll, I'll never forget it. Just the joyous feeling. I remember walking home from that show back to my hotel room and just being totally exhilarated. Like, what a night. What a band. I can't wait to see them this summer. Uh, number two. I've talked about this many times. 1999, Slobber Bone at South by Southwest. Uh, was the first time in my life that I was going through, or the first time that I had diagnosed uh, depression. I did not, I was not diagnosed when I was at South by Southwest, but I was definitely deep in the throes of it at South by Southwest. Um, I wasn't sleeping. I, this is the first time I went to South by Southwest and I wasn't well-traveled at the time, so I was just uneasy and um, I just wasn't doing very well. Uh, and I think it was day two or three, there was a new West Records party, Slobberbone was performing, and I think I had gone two or three days without any sleep uh, from like anxiety and depression. I was just coming out of a relationship and wasn't, you know, I was really young and just, you know, like almost all of us, you know, was going through a really, really bad period. And I remember my friends sort of dragged me, you know, I was doing all the stuff, you know, Jeff Tweedy says, and how to fight loneliness, smile all the time, laugh at every joke. I was doing all that right, like, and that's why that song meant so much to me. Uh, just trying to put on a face that I was okay. Uh, but a few people noticed. Um, and I remember I went to this day show and I had no interest in going. My mind was just elsewhere. And Slobberbone put on what is to this day, the, for me, the best show I've ever seen in my life. Uh, with Jimmy Smith from the Gourds coming on stage. And when they, I think it was the beginning of the encore, it was raining, there were not many people at this show, maybe 30, 40, 50. Uh, they opened with Neil Young's Powderfinger. And 
look up mama there's a white boat coming up the river so, and I just remember feeling hope for the first time in months uh, or what felt like months maybe it was just weeks and I knew in that moment that I was going to be okay and if it hadn't been for that show I don't know um, you know I would have made it out eventually but I remember walking out of the venue and being like, I'm alive again. Uh, and I can't thank the members of Slobberbone and the Gourds for helping me uh, on that day. So that's number two. And number one, so either 1992 or 1993, with my brother Lane, uh, Bruce Springsteen. This was on the Human, Ta Human Touch Lucky Town tour. Uh, this is the night that he played, you know, to me it seemed like the East Street Band had been broken up for a hundred years, right? Because I was still really young, the East Street Band hadn't, I had seen them once in 1985. Uh, it's the ticket stub I have right here, which I've shown many times. Is that gonna... Um, I don't think that was clear. <laughs> uh, it's 1985. August 21st, Bruce Springsteen at the Meadowlands, $17.50 for section 110, which I believe was the first row outside of the pit on the side. $17.50. Uh, so Bruce hadn't played with, I guess it had been seven. I think they played it together a little bit on the Tunnel of Love tour, so maybe five years. But again, to us it seemed like they'd knit, the East Japan had been broken up forever. And my brother and I, my brother Lane and I, we were up uh, on the, there was a runway at the top of what was then called the Brendan Byrne Arena in East Rutherford, which was next to Giant Stadium, indoor arena. Um, and there was like a runway at the top that you could hang out and people would go up there and run around and dance. And I remember Lane and I were up on that runway and when 10th Avenue Freeze Out kicked in, I just remember he immediately picked up on the moment and was trying to yell in my ear what was about to happen. And he was trying to scream. They made that change uptown when the big man joined the band. In other words, saying there's no way they can play this song without Clarence Clemens. And he just kept yelling the lyrics. And I remember I finally caught on right when Bruce sang it. And you see Clarence start to walk out from the back of the, he had a white cowboy hat on. Uh, and it was the loudest I've ever heard a music, a, an arena ever. Um, the loudest I've ever heard a stadium, I think was Yankee Stadium, 2001 World Series, uh, game three when Tino Martinez hit a two run home run uh, to tie it versus the Arizona Diamondbacks. The stadium was moving um, and it was after 9-11 and it was such an emotional moment. I think that's the, the most, like loudest and chaotic I've ever seen a stadium, just pure joy. But this Springsteen moment, I remember, if I remember right, I think Lane like put his hands on my shoulders so I could feel the ground and you could feel the arena swaying. Um, and they played 10th Avenue and, you know, we thought there may never be another E Street Band um, show. And just to see Clarence, absolutely magical. The greatest concert moment of my life. Uh, I'm going to be traveling quite a bit again uh, in the coming weeks, so I will try and get more of these. I have a bunch of ideas for videos that I'd like to do, so hopefully I will uh, have some more uh, coming soon. I'll do a record store day one. That's this weekend, uh, so I should be back here in just a bit. Uh, hope you're all well. Uh, thanks for following, and I will talk to you soon.